Botswana is a land of great geographical contrast. Most of its southern area, 350,000 square miles, is covered by the dry and sandy savanna known as the Kalahari Desert. In the northwest is the Okavango Delta, an inland river which becomes an abundant habitat for animals each rainy season when it floods. It's home to a variety of species such as lions, leopards, warthogs, gazelles, and all the others that are quite interesting. They are all playing a part in the daily battle known as the food chain. Now Botswana is a landlocked country, so there is no ocean or sea on any side um, of its borders. Instead, it's surrounded by the following countries, which is like in a clockwise order. So um, Angola, Zambia, Zimbabwe, South Africa, and Namibia. The distance between Ohio and Botswana is about 8,102 miles. And the flight time is about an 18 hour flight, 36 minutes change. And they're, they're in the Central African time zone, which puts them six hours ahead of us in the States. It had a population of over 2 million as of 2013. Setswana is the language of the Swana people and the dominant national language. English is also in another official language. This current, their currency is called Pula, which is the Swana word for rain. It also is the word for blessing or luck. In 1966, Botswana became a free and independent country, no longer under the colonial thumb of the British Empire. Now I'd like to introduce you to a long-term missionary over in Botswana, whose name is Steve Workman. He and his wife have been um, doing missions there for many years. So let's hear what he has to say. Thanks, Jaya, and thank you for letting me do this. Uh, I'm really excited about this project. You asked me several questions that you want me to answer, and so let me get to those. Um, you asked me how long and when did I become a Christian? Um, I became a Christian when I was five years old. My dad was a pastor. I had heard um, the, the gospel all of my life, uh, my young life. And uh, one Sunday afternoon, the Lord touched my heart. I uh, talked to my mom and dad and said, you know, I, I know what I'm doing. Uh, I understand that I'm lost, that I need a savior, and um, I accepted Christ that day. Uh, my mom was kneeling at our couch on our left side, on my left side. Uh, my dad was on my right. I prayed uh, to accept Christ as my savior, repent of my sins, and uh, from that time on, I've known that I'm a Christian, that I am a follower of Jesus Christ. You also asked me how long I've been in the ministry. Um, I began ministry in 1976. That would be about 41 years ago. And so you can figure out how old I am now. And um, I have um, done several things in ministry. I, um, I was uh, at first a, um, worked in a Christian school in Alabama. Uh, I was also a youth pastor and a, a music director when I was in, uh, in the States. And I was in ministry only about seven years in America. And then uh, the Lord called us to the mission field. And we have been here ever since 30, uh, 34 years in May. Uh, we have been a, a missionary. Um, you asked me, uh, what led us to go to uh, to come here to Botswana? Uh, we had been in Kenya for a long time. We left Kenya, and then we um, went to Jamaica for a while. Our children were uh, were getting older. My daughter was entering college. We knew that we our ministry in Kenya was kind of finished, and so we moved closer to home, closer to America for a bit. And uh, we were there, but we were never really happy, never settled in Jamaica. Uh, we just felt like it was sort of a stopover uh, where God had us. And we knew that we weren't happy there, that ministry wasn't what we wanted it to be. 
and one day a missionary from South Africa that we had known for a long time talked to my father-in-law who was our home church pastor and my father-in-law was telling him you know Steve and Pam just still aren't happy uh, they they're not sure what they should be doing but they know that Jamaica isn't the place for them right now and uh, this missionary looked at my father-in-law and said well you know what Stephen uh, Stephen Pam need to do they just need to come back to Africa and it was like that old Ford commercial that some of you may have seen um, that the little light went on over my head and I went yeah that's what we need to do and we started looking, I mean, like almost immediately, within five or 10 minutes, at um, maps of Africa and started uh, talking about and reading uh, about uh, places in Africa. And we looked at two in particular, uh, Namibia, which is to our west here in Botswana, and then Botswana. And um, you ask, why Botswana? Well, we, um, uh, we looked at both of them. I really thought seriously about Man uh, Namibia. A uh, beautiful country, we've been there several times, love it over there, uh, very nice people. Uh, and so we wrote some people there and we wrote some missionaries here in Botswana and we got some responses back. We looked them up on the internet and you know just said, what are the, uh, what are the possibilities uh, and what what could we do, what must we do to get in there? Um, the people in Namibia wrote us and said, we would love for you to come. It's a great place. We really need more missionaries there. Uh, but um, they said it's almost impossible for a missionary to get in here now. Um, the government is very tight, very close to uh, traditional missions. And so you can come, you can try, but you're probably not going to get in. And so we went, okay, uh, God, what else are you doing? What else would you like us to do? And we got one letter from a missionary here in Botswana, and they said, we would love for you to come. You can get in here. We need you here. Please come, please come. And uh, we got some other responses just like that. Uh, from other missionaries here in Botswana and some of those people became our our best uh, friends here while we've been in Botswana and so we we really came here in uh, in response to other missionaries saying please come we will help you any way that we possibly can uh, you asked me what do you most enjoy about what you do um, that's really easy. I love living in Africa. There's just a magic about Africa. There, there's nothing, you almost have to experience it. Uh, I can't really tell you, uh, I mean, I could tell you stories about Africa. I could tell you about the people and the animals and the land and uh, just all the things that happen here. But you almost have to come and experience it, to see it for yourself. I've never met anyone who came to Africa whose life wasn't changed. I've never met anyone who stepped foot on this incredible continent that didn't go away with a different attitude, a different perspective of life, a different way of looking at their own life once they got back to their home. Uh, we love Africa. We love living here. We love the people. Um, we have met very few people, almost zero people here in, in Botswana that are hostile to us at all, that have said, why are you here? We really don't want you here. Uh, everybody is open to us being here. They love us being here. Um, and um, we love the people. We love to talk to them, to meet with them, to be able to uh, tell them about Christ and about uh, what he did for them. Um, there's just some really, really good parts about living here in Africa. Um, the hardest part, you ask,
这个电话你知道吗？嗯我忘了。